Okay, well, I want to go back to the same demented model. Okay? So I've been saving this for months just so I could set it up here and not have to write it again. Okay? And we really did it. Um, so as an illustration, uh, this is the same demented model for two dimensions. Now we could add uh, some kind of borderline people and you know extend the matrix a little bit so we'd have maybe three eigenvectors and stuff like that. And, and, you know, a stochastic matrix, remember, has the characteristics that the columns add up to one. Mm -hmm. So what that does is it doesn't change your total quantity, your total population in this case. You're just transitioning within a given population, okay? And that's the way probabilities work. Your probability always have to, probabilities always have to add to one, so mm -hmm. it's kind of a natural thing. And we can't go too deeply into that because we just don't have time. Mm -hmm. It just depends on, you know, what I want to, you know, how, how, I got to look at your homework, got to look at what we can do, and try to bring things together in a way that gives you kind of a nice tight bundle that you can carry on with you and forget that it'll come back to you later, okay? Um, so, and what, what we did <coughs> was we set up the transition, did an example, 10% of your sane become demented, 20% of your demented become sane because we want more sane people, okay? Uh, I think our current political climate makes it go the other way, doesn't it? <laughs> the demented people are all cut with it, you know. What's fantastic is that the population never decreases with that many demented. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, you could modify that too, but <laughs> yeah. I don't want to talk about the details, but okay. So, you know, we can talk about things like can you get the nth power of the transition? Well, it's really easy to do the nth power of a diagonal matrix, isn't it? So if you can diagonalize this matrix and transform it, you can calculate its nth power. That's one of the powerful things you can do. And then you can define things like matrix exponentials and stuff like that. Okay, we're not necessarily going to get to that. Um, and we saw how, you know, you can... Uh, raise this thing to powers, I think we might have, I don't remember, because we certainly found the eigenvectors, okay? And the eigenvectors in a matrix like this are really easy to find. I think we did it symbolically, okay? If this is like, I forget what letters I use, but if I just use A and B, so if this is A and this is B, then this is 1 minus A, and this is 1 minus B, right? And what's the determinant? Well, you can determine what the, you can see what the determinant is, and you can do the eigenvalue thing and the eigenvector thing. You find that um, negative 1, 1 is always an eigenvalue for matrix of this type, or an eigenvector, okay? It might have different eigenvalues depending on the relative probabilities, but it's always an eigenvector. And then you have another eigenvector. And when you take the powers of this matrix, they approach the direction of that eigenvector. OK? Um, so I'm probably going to throw a problem into the homework where we kind of review this. We can also go back and look at the original videos where we developed a lot of it. OK? Will you so, post that with the homework? I'm yeah. sorry? Will you post the original videos with the homework that you're going to I'll try to remember to do that. Okay. But, you. you know, if you go back and look at an assignment and see sane demented, <laughs> you know you're close, right? Right. And it was really early, like within the first few weeks. Okay. Okay? And look, look for eigenvectors and see how that all goes together. I'll try to remember to do that. Uh, all depends on what comes up. Somebody said something about a meeting today at 3 o'clock. If there's a meeting at 3 o'clock, who knows what I'm going to remember. Okay? Uh, and I've got a student coming in at 2.30. Um, but I, I should still have time to get all this done. So if I'm cognizant at the time I put the assignments page together, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Um, Okay, uh, 
But if I don't, again, it should be easy to find. So if you look at this now from a more advanced perspective, you get a good example of what's going on. And your book has a section on applications. And one of the applications they do is systems of differential equations. Well, you're not ready to relate to that yet. Okay? But this comes up in differential equations in a section that's otherwise difficult if you don't have this background. Okay? But not that bad if you do. Um, and a couple of other applications, rotations of conic sections and quadric surfaces. Again, you're not that cognizant of three-dimensional conic sections and surfaces in three dimensions, so I don't think it would be necessarily a good thing to do, but the whole thing about diagonalization and, and, and this whole section allows that sort of thing, okay? Uh, so there are some applications, but the one that you would understand is the one that's related to this model. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. But that's all I'm going to say about it today. You got this, you can kind of review it and maybe review those videos, which I ought to look up and link for you. It'd be easier for me to find them than you, but it's not hard to find them.